I don't want to get the inside scoop here. I'm most fascinated by what's going on at USC for a couple reasons. First, they're the, the first campus to cancel their graduation ceremonies. But then you get the added bonus that their valedictorian that they chose to speak uh, is a Muslim woman. And now that's like it's a whole thing. <laughs> and one of the professors said that the university is under a right wing attack, which I think is just hilarious. Riley Gold and Angelica Baker is the president and the vice president of USC's college republicans riley angelica how are you great how are you doing i'm doing fantastic thanks for getting up early for us fun times on usc campus huh oh the best the best <laughs> what a blast uh riley we'll start with you when did this all pop off um you know i i think it's been kind of a recent thing but i think it's been something that's been in the works for a, a while um it's just really kind of unfortunate to see how it's playing off in how they're kind of trying to blame the us as Republicans on campus, but when in reality it's their own fault and their own wrongdoing. Hold on, hold on. How could they blame the Republicans on campus? How many Republicans are on campus, first of all, and how are they blaming the Republicans on campus? Well, you know, that's kind of the unfortunate thing. There's a lot of us, and we know that there are because they pass by our tabling events on campus, but they say to us they're too afraid to speak out, whether they're in Greek life or they think they'll be disowned by their friends and so it's really just an unfortunate um, time in our country I think with the election coming up and kind of rising the political um, tension in our country and so it, there's more of us than we think but we still have a good amount that um, support our values. How are they blaming how are these protesters blaming you guys? Um, I just think that they think the problems rely more on they just, they can never take kind of ownership for the problems, and I think that's more of a standard liberal mm -hmm. tactic in itself anyways. Yeah. Like the professor saying under a right-wing attack, I think they just really need to analyze kind of what they're doing and the morals of the people who are protesting what they think and kind of their political ideology and see where that problem starts. Yeah. Angelica, the vice president of USC College Republicans, what are you seeing on campus and how widespread is it? It is a major problem. It is quite widespread. You will see it in classes. I have had classmates who have openly bragged, in a way, about attending these protests, about committing acts of vandalism. It's almost a daily occurrence um, that anyone you see, there is a good chance they either support either through social media or physically these protests. That's interesting. So I, I'm under this impression that it's, it's, and I don't know why, that it's just maintained in this small area. Like, and when I went to school, we have this thing called cross campus and it's this grassy area and this is where it is. But, but is that true at USC or is it, are they like also interrupting class rooms and classes well, and the library and stuff like that? They are in a central area on campus, but the thing is that central area of campus encompasses many of the classrooms. I was actually in one of the classrooms when the protest just started on Wednesday. And my Korean class was disruptive. Our door was locked partway through the classroom and her, our professor had a hard time coming back in when she went to use the bathroom, which is ridiculous <laughs> and kind of funny in a way. You can't help but chuckle at it. Um, you could yeah. see through the window the people protesting. You could hear, the, hear their chants and it was a language class. I need to be able to hear my professor. <laughs> Riley, what about the canceling of graduation? And, and the reasons they gave for doing that to me seemed odd. What do you think? I, I think they just are constantly trying to put off taking the ownership of their own wrongdoing. I mean, they have about 100 applicants that apply for the role of being valedictorian, and they chose this person, and they should have been more thorough with their check of seeing what she would have talked about, especially with her background. And so I just think that, it, I mean, I know classmates that are absolutely devastated. They have people that are flying in from out of the country to attend something, especially since, like you said earlier, we were 2020 a COVID graduate, so we've never really had a full graduation. So this is just really devastating, and um, we just wish that they would just finally take ownership or try to fix the problems because there's constant uh, protests still happening on campus. How do they pick Riley from, so how do you guys pick your valedictorian? It's not just the person with the highest GPA. It's like a whole process. How do you guys do that? Yeah. So I believe it's people with um, at least a 4.0 and then um, they're kind of like picked out of that. And then they're like asked to like apply and I think they fill out an application and then 
Um, a few of them are called to be interviewed by like the provost and like another board of people. And so that's how we get our emails, mostly from the president or the provost saying like kind of updating us on what the status is of graduation and everything. Okay. So, so this is So who, so the question is who picks the valedictorian speaker out of that group of 100? Is it the administration or is it a student board? I believe it's the administration. Yeah, okay, so this is their own fault. <laughs> so they chose, and what's this person's problem? Like in their uh, profile, they have a link to a website that says basically kill all the Jews and all that, right? So that they knew what they were getting into. Yes, absolutely. I mean, I think it came out later after they picked her. They finally looked at their social me- her social media, and she was posting protests like that. And it's just like you would think you would have looked at that earlier, but I guess not. Yeah. Uh, Angelica, I was making the point earlier, and correct me if I'm wrong, that there's, USC said that there's security concerns about having the massive graduation where 65,000 people come on campus with security concerns. And this woman, this, this graduation speaker, uh, or would be, um, is all like, you know, they wouldn't tell us what the concerns are, what are the security concerns. And, and my point is, it's you guys, not you, it's, it's her team. Her team is, the, it's not the Jewish people on campus. It's not, the, I don't know, was it, is it the USC college Republicans? Were you guys planning on any disturbances on the, <laughs> the graduation ceremony? I mean, it's her side. They'd like to think so. Honestly, they do. But no, it's, it's their own side that is causing these so-called security issues. Um, and I think it's ridiculous to not point out the fact of where they think these security issues lie. Of course, there's natural security concerns when you have 60,000 people flocking into an area. But President Obama was at the USC commencement last year watching his daughter graduate. If they can handle having a security for a former president, they can handle figuring out a way to have our commencement so we can have a proper graduation. Yes. Wow, what a good point. That's so lame. Um, Angelica, I uh, read that this commencement speaker... She's a major in biomedical engineering with a minor in resistance to genocide. And I thought that was kind of like a joke. I thought that was, I thought that was like, uh, oh, I'm a history major with a minor in beer pong. That's why I kind of thought that was like a, like, just like a funny thing that she does on the side. But it turns out that's a real thing. You can minor in resistance to genocide. Are you minoring in resistance to genocide? Uh, no, I am not. I am majoring in international relations, which, I mean, does encompass some of those attitudes. But the thing that's kind of interesting, I would guess you would say, about this minor and about USC's whole minor system is you can create your own minor. I don't know if this minor existed before she decided if she wanted to create or minor in resistance to genocide. I'm not sure what the classes would look like to satisfy a requirement for that minor, but the idea that she would minor in, or major in something so scientific and very intelligent, I will give her, a science is difficult, but then why genocide on top of that? Yes. No, it's a, it's a real thing. They, I, there's like, I, I'm looking right now at the courses you have to take. There's like eight courses in it, and there's hit certain history courses. One of them's called Resistance to Genocide. So it's like, it's a whole thing. Um, Riley, what else? What's it like being a Republican on uh, USC's campus? What's, what's happening these days in general? I mean, I, I won't give any power to the left, but I, I mean, it is definitely tough. I mean, I've been on posted on anonymous uh, platforms that we have at USC. We have an anonymous uh, app, which probably is not great for a college campus because people feel like they can say whatever they want. But I've been asked to be in the Daily Trojan about um, political dates we have with the Democrats, and uh, which is our school newspaper, and just like calling me out when I wasn't even on this board just to try to highlight me as this, I guess, racist, like highly political person, um, when in reality we just really just try to promote our own values so it, it's just this campus is i don't think welcomes us or promotes us and they pretty much do everything they can to try to act like that we don't exist so mm. uh rather we were talking to senator tom cotton a moment ago mm-hmm. and he says we should bring in the national guard on certain college campuses uh to to help to, to get rid of these protests and we had mixed results on that i don't know if i agree with it some people think yes right so we were talking about that earlier what is what is your take uh, we'll start with Riley on, should we bring in the National Guard to shut this down? Because you guys did, or you, you brought in the police and they arrested 95 people. Did that stop it? Did that escalate it? Did they love it? Like, did these, these protesters love having the police take them down so they could be the oppressors? How do you think we should proceed? I mean, I, I do think that they kind of like playing the victims and showing how beef on the police, you know, police are so bad, they're hurting me, when in reality, they're just, they're the problem. Um, but... I don't know. I support, obviously, the military and police, but 
I think bringing in the National Guard is too far, but I think the problem um, relies on our administration and Carol Fult releasing that, oh, you know, negotiating with protest um, officials saying, like, she won't arrest people today. I just think she needs to stop the problem. It's getting too out of hand, the graffiti on the campus, and just I think if the police and it was really structured from the beginning, we wouldn't be at this point. Mm, that's right. Angelica, what do you think should um, happen this point forward in a sane world? I agree that the, well, the funny thing is, i got a little story for you. When this was all going down, I had a classmate post a picture of the LAPD in riot gear. There were no uh, major assault weapons or anything like that, just had batons and shields. And they said the LAPD was bringing militarized gear onto campus. At first class, I said, if they want to see the military, then bring it on. Honestly. Um, but I do think that would be a PR nightmare, and I don't know if that would go over holistically the best way. But if they are saying that the military is there, then bring them. That's my opinion. Mm. Uh, Riley, they're still having campus graduations, right? They're just having little ones, like a, a couple dozen smaller ones. And w what are the, pr it's May 10th, right? What are the protests going to happen then? Like, how, like, they're still going to cause trouble even if there's not one big giant one, right? Like, what are you expecting? Right. I mean, I know they're saying that now people have to have a ticket and now it's going to be checked. And I think that's going to be absolutely insane. There's going to be so many extras of thousands of people on campus and to check everyone's ticket. And I, even on these past few weeks, they've had us show our ID just to get onto campus. And sometimes only residents could get onto campus. So I think it's absolutely insane. I think for them to they might expect some people to vote us, but if they think this is totally going to eliminate the problem, they're, I, don't, I don't think that's a good idea at all. And I think they're just trying to do everything they can to not officially just stop this problem. Yeah. Riley, what are you doing next year? I'm actually getting my, so we have a progressive degree for master's, and I'm actually a gerontology major, so study of aging, and I'm going to master's in senior living, hospitality, and management. Yeah. Wow, unbelievable. Well done. <laughs> Angelica, how about you? What are you up to next year? Um, well, I am finishing up a few prerequisite classes before I start a master's in nursing degree program. Wow, good for both of you. Beautiful, wonderful. All right, well, you brought a lot of hope to people listening now uh, that some, some good is happening on these college campuses. Riley Gold and uh, Angelica Baker, president and vice president of USC College Republicans. Thank you both for getting up early. Appreciate it. Of course. Thank you so much for having us. Have a wonderful day. Keep up the uh, great work. Go Trojans.